<laughs> yeah. And then, and then what, if, once you like say like, I'm going to the games or I'm going to, you know, semifinals or whatever like that, and you don't get in, you know, then, then, then there's that fear that comes in and you, you've expressed that in the Savant podcast about you being fear of, of coming back and failure. So how, how did you get, how did you switch that mindset from, being in fear to listen, I, I can hang with the best of these guys still. That's a good question. Um, That's why I podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's like the fear's still there, right? But I, I think there, I recognize that everybody has some amount of fear in their head. Um, but like, I, I got to the point where I wasn't going to let the fear just prevent me from finding out like what I could do, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and it wasn't about like, I think I can hang with the best because I, I, I truly had no idea. I, I didn't really know how fit I was compared to anybody else because I hadn't competed like individually in so long. Um, I didn't have, you know, a, a training camp to compare scores off of or anything. Um, and like there was a few times where like, you know, maybe I did do a workout that someone else had done that was a good athlete. And like I was like, OK, like I, I can actually like compare that. And mm -hmm. I ended up getting a few people following like the Imam company who were very talented and very fit. And I could kind of start gauging myself off of that. But I still didn't really know. I'd been out of it for long enough. And um, but that 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 question like that like the the not knowing kind of stopped mattering I was like well i'm just gonna go see like kind of what i'm capable of and see like where this journey goes and like tell myself that like the result is not why you're doing this like you're not doing this so you can qualify you're doing this because you love this this path you love this journey so like just go do it you know mm -hmm. yeah and, and i see fear as kind of like a handicap too because it actually like stops people for for doing stuff like for yeah. example when i was working at a, a children's hospital in the er i was talking to this lady and she's like where are you from and i'm like oh i'm from massachusetts and they're from they're, it was in atlanta and so she's like where's that and i was like massachusetts and so she's like yeah and i'm like oh it's like north of like north of like connecticut you know new york and stuff like that it's, it's really close to that area she's like oh i've never left atlanta people don't want to like yeah dude. Uh, and i'm like like you can't let like can't you can't let fear hinder yeah. like like you're gonna regret everything in life you're like i never let a left atlanta like i yeah. could have gone to like the next state over or like or visit a whole bunch of places yeah um i think i've like i've, I've certainly battled fear so much through my life um fear of of not getting good enough gpa in undergrad fear of not getting into a good graduate school fear of not matching in a residency fear of not qualifying for the crossfit games like the fear goes on and on and like i think actually over the past few months like i kept reflecting on all of those times i was so afraid of the failure that was to come and all the times where like i did fail because i've certainly failed in, a, in, a, in enough things yeah. to to be you know familiar with failure mm-hmm like the world kept turning i just figured out a new way i found out like a new path or like the next like how to reapproach the thing that i had failed so i can try again like i realized that like fair is just failure is just part of it dude you know it's like okay like you're going to fail like and you should be the person that is failing things because if you're always like reaching your goal then maybe you're just not ambitious enough so it's like dude like who gives who gives a a shit if you go and fail this thing like go do the thing anyway dude yeah and so i think that was a big part of it it's just like okay like who gives like who cares if you don't if you don't attain the goal that you wanted it's like you're gonna set a new one the day you get back anyway and you're gonna go try to chase that and maybe you fail at that one or maybe you like succeed but like i realized that like the game's the thing i'm playing and it's not like the goal post i'm trying to reach i just want to keep playing the game whatever mm -hmm. that game is whether that's like whether that's work or whether that's CrossFit or whether that's like the next thing that I do after CrossFit is like the game's going to keep getting played. And that's what I want to do. I don't like, I will never be finished, you know? Yeah. 
definitely. Yeah. I, and it's like, I've had fear myself too, even like starting like my, my former t-shirt company type one lifting and even starting this podcast, it was like fear. And then, um, I, I read a book called screw it, just do it by Richard Branson. It's like, it's a real short book. It pretty much talks about like how he was like, just screw it. I'm just going to do it anyway. Like whatever. Yeah. I'm going to go to this person's house. I'm going to do this, 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 and then came out to what, like what it is. And so I was like, Oh, okay. I should do that. And so, you know, if I didn't do, if I didn't do half the stuff, I wouldn't be, you know, here talking to you or even doing other things too. Yeah, absolutely. Dude. Like, yeah. The fear is always going to be there. It's whether or not you face it. And like, I mean, I think that's another thing that like you probably seen it is like bravery is not the absence of fear. Bravery is doing the thing while you're afraid of it anyway. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did now, um, throughout the whole process, were you talking to anybody or like, you know, did you read a book that kind of, you know, other than your dad and, you know, and Travis or whoever else, like, you know, did, was there something that like was like sparked that sparked and said, okay, like this fear is not going to, you know, be me at all. Yeah. So like, I mean, that fear side of things was recent. Um, we're like, I guess the, cause I mean, throughout competing, I've always had like those, those small fears, but like this year was a little bit different in the sense that like fear almost stopped me from continue, like from trying. Yeah. Like it legitimately, like the fear was that strong in my head and yeah, there were a lot of people I talked to. There were a lot of books I read. Um, <laughs> you know from you know, my wife uh you know discussing like whether or not i should do it or this that and that. like talking to her about like my desire to even want to do it um you know I, I go i go to therapy every couple weeks I, I see a therapist now and like that's been insanely helpful for like working through the things in my head because i'm a pretty closed off person and so it took me like working with a, a an individual that like i found trust in and opened to like a like a relationship where I could be vulnerable with. And like, that's hard for me to admit on this podcast, like talk about like, I, you know, I, I go to therapy <laughs> frequently. Um, Cause that's a new thing for me over the past few months. But like, honestly, it's been one of the most, most beneficial things for me in, in all walks of life. Um, and like diving into like, why am I afraid? Like, why do I care about what other people think? Like why, why all these things like, and realizing that like i don't have to care about what everyone else thinks about me all the time right um yep. you know there's a there's a few books that i've read that have been pretty insightful over the past few months and so like i think it helped me kind of callous my mind over a good bit and and find a, a good bit of clarity and uh yeah it's been it's been good it's awesome yeah I, i've i do therapy too as well so i mean it's been a huge help. Like, like, like yourself, I'm pretty, you know, st I, I don't know. My wife said I'm kind of stoic a little bit that I don't say anything or just yeah. like kind of, you know, I'm just quiet until like the last minute I'll say, Oh, Hey, I got, I got this going on or I got, I got this. And so she's like, what, what, yeah. what the hell? Like, you know, why yeah. didn't you tell me this earlier? So like now it's like, even like with podcasting, like I try not to tell her like last minute saying, Hey, I got a podcast like this day like you know like the the day before i try to tell her like at least a good time in advance so she's like prepared that like hey he's gonna be down here from like 8 30 to 10 o'clock or whatever or god knows how long so yeah. and and like you know all that stuff communicate i think communication is key too so and obviously um with your wife and stuff like that when you guys when you talked about hey i, I want to give this another go um what was she saying throughout the whole process she's been the most supportive human in my life man um and so like dude she's always said like you know i don't care if we have kids i don't care how many jobs you work i don't care how many companies you're working for like if you want to do this like we'll we'll figure out a way to make it happen and uh so, so like you know i ask her you know like should i compete this year she's like i think you should do it as long as you want to you know like as long as you have a desire to and like you're enjoying it like there's no reason for you to ever stop. Like we will, we will find the time, you know? So she's awesome. 